Hi, and welcome to another waveform tutorial. So today we're going to look at two simple but very powerful techniques for creating complex music without knowing any music theory whatsoever, just using lives and built effects. So you can see here I've got four tracks which are basically routed into a grand piano and combined they make up a fairly complex and what I would say quite nice sounding melodic piece. So while it might sound fairly complex overall, in fact, each of these individual parts, so you can see we've got 4-4 four, four time, 3-4 time, 5-4 time, and 7-4 time. So if I turn the other ones off and just leave on our 4-4 four, four time, we can hear it's a pretty simple part to start off with. So we can see there's the notes. And you can see the extreme left uh, in the clip here, we've got the time signature, which is 4-4. Four, four. So we click on our 3-4, you can see it's 3-4 and so on, 5-4 and 7-4. So if we start our 3-4 clip, now we can see that there's three beats to every four in the 4-4 four, four time, so that's going to loop over each other differently, so it will never play back exactly the same, not, not for a while anyway. So the same principle applies with the 5-4 and the 7-4. Each of them is going to loop around differently. The bar lengths are actually different, so they're going to combine in different ways over the course of say 18, 20, 24 bars, whatever it is. So there's our five, four time as well. So you can see there's a time signature there. And then the seven, four again, same thing. So if we launch all of them, now they're sprayed, spread over different octaves, etc., just to make it a, a bit more complex and spread out over the keyboard. So again, it sounds much more complex than it actually is. If we look at each individual clip, they're actually very simple as an of themselves. So let's go about recreating this from scratch. So I'm going to close that down and turn off the track. So we're going to create a MIDI track. Control Shift T or Command Shift T and do the same thing again. So just double click to create a MIDI clip. So what we're going to do is create a scale clip first. So what I'm going to do is create if you don't know how to create, you don't know the notes of an actual scale, we're just going to use Ableton's inbuilt scale uh, effect. So we're going to create every semitone in a scale, so C, C sharp, etc., etc., all the way up to the next C. Okay, so there's our 12 semitones. Now, what we're going to do is grab C minor scale from scale effect. So you go MIDI effects, scale, and then C minor scale. So this is going to limit only output the notes of the C minor scale. So we make sure we've got it routed into 8 MIDI. And then when we launch, so you can see there's our notes. We can stop that. I'll crop this clip down to one bar. Now we've got the notes of the C minor scale. So what we're going to do is duplicate these up and down the octaves so we've got a decent amount of range to work with, say five or six octaves. So move it up and then cross over to the next C and the same thing again. And then we'll do the same thing down lower down in the lower octaves. And once more, just for good measure. Now, very importantly, we press the fold. So this allows us, we can only now hit notes of the C minor scale. So what we're going to do is move all those notes outside of our clip box. So they won't be sounded. So now any note we draw in will be in the C minor scale. So I'm just going to name that C minor. Now what we're going to do is make several duplicated copies of that. We might actually just turn that off or get rid of it. Okay, so there's our scale clip. We'll just actually get rid of that one, just get it out of the way. So now we're going to do is duplicate 
our scale clip. So we're going to have four instances of it. We're going to rename them 3, 4, or 4, 4 first, which is going to be our basic rhythmic bass. That's our straight. Then 3, 4, 5, 4, and 7, 4 are all going to play around that 4, 4 rhythmic bass. So they're going to weave around it in nice, hopefully nice ways. So now what we're going to do is route them all to one instrument. So we'll create one more MIDI track. And let's just take a piano sound. So go to instruments, simpler grand piano. Throw it in the track. Okay. So select all the tracks and choose our output. So we can start our track, all our clips playing. And we go into our 4 4 track first. And we can draw on whatever note we want. So I'm just going to reduce the size of the subdivisions so to quarters. Do that again. Okay, so there's actually two instances of Grand Piano, so we might have routed it to the wrong one. Just go back there, so I'll change it to 11 grand piano, which is the one we're looking for. So here's our note. So we're going to reduce the velocity to a sensible level. And then we can just duplicate the note and move it around. duplicate that to uh, make it a two-wire loop and then make some further adjustments and then adjust the velocities just to give it a bit more of a pulse So moving on to our 3-4. So we just need to adjust our loop brace once we've changed our time signature to 3-4. We've got to reduce the size of our loop brace. Again, we've got, just got to go back in and change the routing so we're in the right grand piano, which is not two, it should be 11. So we select all of those tracks, change it. So there's our three, four part. So let's throw in a few more notes. And again, drop down our velocities. We can use the modifiers within the clip, so we're going to use inverse or reverse, really handy for immediately changing notes around. And then we can make some further adjustments. Just tinker around with stuff yourself, whatever. You're guaranteed to be in the scale, so technically you shouldn't have bound notes, but the way that the, uh, the various clips move around each other means some parts might work better than others. So just ex experiment and see what comes up for yourself. Again, we go into our next track and we adjust the loop brace so we're actually at a bar. So you can 
can see now we've got five beats in every bar. So we'll move on to our 7-4. So again, we go over and change our time signature to 7-4, and you'll notice the bar changing. So again, re resizing our loop so it's a full bar. And again, just draw in willy-nilly wherever you like, see what happens. So it's a really good way of experimenting. You might not have an absolute clue about minor scale, major scale, whatever. This is a way of getting up and running really quickly and making something sound much more complex than it is. Again, use one of our modifiers, we can in double the size of a loop, invert or reverse the second half to create extra complexity and then adjust any extra notes we want. Same thing. So one really great way of creating further interest is creating syncopation, so off beats. So we divide, use our subdivision, so we make eights rather than quarters. So start moving the notes onto off beats. So it'll move around each, each one will move around the other even in more interesting ways. So you can hear it sounding more played already. So I'm going to use the syncopation more on the 3-4, 5-4 and 7-4 and keep the 4-4 four, four pretty straight. So that's our kind of rock and the rest of the stuff can move around it.
that's moving around nicely between each one to my ear anyway so let's just look at that in the session view in the arrangement view should I say so we can just see how each bar is of a different length so let's drag each one out so it's 24 bars long So just to reiterate the process, is first we create a scale clip, so using the scale device built into Ableton. So whatever scale it can be, A minor, C minor, Byzantine scale, whatever you want. So you're basically constraining yourself first between notes, and then we're creating four separate uh, time signatures. So in this case, 4-4, four, 3-4, four, 5-4, four, and 7-4. So again, we're constraining itself in each each one, so we have a different number of notes. So we've already got things kind of mapped out for ourselves. So it's a really cool way of creating melodies, complex melodies. So I hope this is a help, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks very much.